This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. Today, the Sussex Squad are at it again. It looks like there is another campaign going on to attack Catherine. We know that this behavior is standard whenever there is scrutiny on the Harkles or their shady and dodgy business affairs. I agree with Taz on this one. No doubt the Sussex PR machine have executed on another campaign to detract away from Harry and Meghan meeting up with this Nigerian money launderer. And fugitive. The Daily Mail is reporting today that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were welcomed to Nigeria by a fugitive who had been federally indicted in the United States for allegedly orchestrating a $20 million money laundering and bank fraud scheme. I'm telling you, birds of a feather certainly flock together. Show me your friends and I can tell you exactly who you are. Air Peace CEO and Chairman Dr. Alan Anayama, whose airline Meghan and Harry took for their flight from the nation's capital, Abuja, into its largest city of Lagos, on May 12th was a key member of the welcoming committee that met with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex when they touched down on the tarmac as part of their three-day royal tour of Nigeria. Now, I'm sure that Megan's people vetted the people that they were going to be talking to, which leads me to believe that there's a bigger plan to this. Sure, this is not great optics, being that this 59-year-old businessman is a wanted man in the United States facing multiple charges linked to millions of dollars worth of alleged fraud set down in a federal indictment that was filed in November of 2019. Keep in mind that this was under the Trump administration. It all ties back to... What's going on here in our government in the United States? And I'll get to that in a second. As I've commented before, I did make the observation that this whole entire Nigerian facade was Megan's audition to show the world that she could be a statesman. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to these teams, to our executive director of the R12 Foundation. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm... I am delighted to have this great honor of being here and having this opportunity to address you. It is truly an honor to be speaking with you tonight. We are thrilled to be here. I'm very, very grateful and very humbled. There she is, Miss America. There she is, your ideal. The dreams of a million girls who are more than pretty may come true in Atlantic City, or they may turn out to be the queen of femininity. There she is, Miss America. There she is, your ideal. With so many beauties, she took the town by storm With her all-American face and form And there she is, walking on air she is Fairest of the fair she is, Miss America And who does Megan have to thank for this presidential feel? That would be Miranda Barbeau Miranda Barbeau was the lead PR guru for the Obama re-elect campaign. Now, if you've been following this couple and particularly paying attention to recently, the U.S. government has been protecting Harry and his visa. DHS has been dragging their feet on giving any kind of information away on Prince Harry's status here in the United States. This treasonous POS, Mayorkas, seen on the right here, is the one who's at the head of Department of Homeland Security, the one responsible for holding secret Harry's visa. This is the man who is destroying currently the United States by keeping the borders wide open and allowing Tom, Dick, and Harry unvetted into this country, not keeping Americans safe. Department of Homeland Security is also a part of this censorship agenda. Wow, what a coincidence that they're protecting Harry. Well, that would be Joe Biden directly. It's been surprising that the U.S. diplomat to the U.K. came out and said, oh, Harry will never get deported under the Biden administration. And then a couple of weeks later, we had Nancy Pelosi coming out and defending Harry. And how suspicious that Gavin Newsom comes out of nowhere and supports Meghan and Harry's Fugazi public charity. 
like, is it coincidence that Megan, being the black woman that she is, is supporting all the policies that Kamala Harris is pushing out? Who could forget Megan with Kamala's husband? And the common thread between these three politicians, aside from them being corrupt, is they're all from California. Wow, what a small world. So why do you think Megan's always wearing white, especially when she's pretending to play a dignitary or statesman? It's because Nancy Pelosi started this trend during the Trump era. During the Trump years, the Democratic women wore this white in Congress to show solidarity for the Me Too movement, women's rights, but more importantly, women's reproductive rights. So no doubt that Megan is wearing this white to show and send a message to the Democrats, the donkeys, that she is one of them and that she will fight for the women's movement, which I believe that she's not only playing the race card, but she's also playing the powerful women who should be independent and have rights and blah, blah, blah. Hear me roar. Correct me if I'm wrong, but prior to this Trump State of the Union address and these women showing solidarity in women's rights, Meghan never wore white pantsuits. Now all of a sudden, everywhere she goes, Meghan's always wearing white, I believe, is to force the message into people's heads that she's so pure and sophisticated and has confidence because she's a strong black woman. Seriously, Meghan's nickname should be Open Legs Markle. Like, I hate that she does this. She thinks it looks powerful and confident, but I think it just looks aggressive and bitchy. Anyway, I don't mean to get off topic, but getting back to the idea of Megan jumping into politics, well, the signs are there with all these Democrats backing this couple, as well as the PR pieces that they keep putting out. Like yesterday, this PR piece came up, like this one from the Daily Express. They did a poll. Do you think Meghan Markle wants to be president of the United States? Of course she does. Meghan wants to be queen of the world in any position that she could have in order to rival Catherine and William. She's going to go for it. And what other position would there be? It would be the president of the United States. The other position that I think Meghan would go after would be like the Speaker of the House. You don't think Meghan wants that gavel to be banging it all day long and to be doing backroom deals like what Pelosi and Mike Johnson had been doing? How do you think Pelosi gained all her wealth? Also, Speaker of the House is the third most powerful person in government. Now, I know many of you right now are shaking your head saying Meghan will never become president. And I would agree with you. Today, if she were to run for president, she wouldn't even make the ballot. Nobody's taking her serious. However, what we do have to pay attention to are the things that are not being said, as well as understand the people behind them, supporting them and what their motivations are. The thing that we have to pay attention to is Meghan getting her foot in the door with a government position because we have seen how she operated and weaseled her way into the royal family. Don't think that she's not going to try and weasel her way up to the White House. The thing that needs to be prevented is Meghan having access and security clearance to information that could be weaponized. This woman is vengeful, spiteful, as well as vindictive. I do believe that Megan is testing the waters because, again, another puff piece comes out as an exclusive with the Daily Mail in which it says, Meghan Markle's path to the White House, step-by-step -step guide to how Duchess of Sussex could use quasi-royal Nigerian tour as springboard for presidential bid. And in this ridiculous article, they lay it all out. Starting with step one, this activism, explaining and justifying Megan's excuse for showing up to exploit dead children was about more gun control. The next box that Megan obviously is checking off is the LGBTQIA and women's groups because that's where all taxpayer money has been thrown at by these donkeys over the last four years. Of course, she's going to support it because she wants to be accepted by these people. But does she believe in gender equity or women's rights? No, she doesn't care. Like, if she really cared, then she wouldn't be so fixated on her children having these pronoun-labeled titles such as prince and princess. Again, I said, what if Archie doesn't want to be a prince and he wants to be a princess? Of course, we already know about Invictus turning it into the Megan show. Seriously, Invictus needs to think hard and long on whether or not they can continue moving forward with having Megan and Harry on board because every time she shows up, it turns into her show. 
These two are doing nothing for these veterans except exploiting them for their personal brand. It's disgusting, especially knowing that these two are deliberately undermining those freedoms and rights that these veterans had fought so hard for us to have. Now, going back to this distraction by the squad, I have a theory. This is just speculating, and this is just me thinking about possibilities. Obviously, the news about Alan Anayama being indicted by the United States for money laundering and fraud doesn't look so good for Harry and Meghan being pictured and associated with him, does it now? Especially if Meghan has any interest on entering into politics. And why it matters is because if Meghan is going to run for a political position, she's going to need money to campaign. So where is she going to get this money? Who are going to be those wealthy donors? Perhaps Alan Anayema might be interested in funding Meghan's campaign. I mean, after all, he funded Obama's campaign back in 2012 when he ran for his second term. Here he is, pictured with the re-elected president and vice president during the presidential victory dinner. One has to wonder how much money this guy gave to Obama's re-election campaign. Maybe we should ask Miranda Barbeau said she was the one responsible for the success of Obama's re-election. Something that we're going to need to keep in the back of our minds and save for a rainy day in the event, God forbid, Meghan does run for a political position, is who is really funding the campaign? Meghan and Harry don't have that kind of money, so they're going to need donors. I could easily see Meghan following in the same footsteps of Hillary Clinton and how she raised money for her campaign. From what I hear, it was a pay-to-play model to which the Clinton Foundation was used as a vehicle. I can totally see Megan use Archwell as that vehicle in order to fund her ambition. Could I see Megan taking money from Nigeria for political purposes? Totally. Megan did not go to Nigeria to be the loving wife and support her husband for Invictus. Megan had a mission going to Nigeria, and I believe that in some form it was about money. Because that's all this woman thinks about, is money. I think by now we all know not to trust this woman. I think this facade and show that they put on for the world really was exactly that, a show. I don't trust Megan for one second. The last six years, it's been lie upon lie upon lie. This should be no different. Megan is not 43% Nigerian. And the lengths that this couple went to in order to convince the world in their propaganda that she was Nigerian, to me, I think failed. But there are people that are willing to play this game as we've seen. I've come to the conclusion that all this was was about optics. How many of you looked at each other and said, how is it that nobody is challenging Megan on her revelation of being 43% Nigerian? It's a simple answer. It's psychological manipulation by using and weaponizing the media. The way that Megan controls the narrative and saturates all the mainstream media outlets with the bullshit and lies, as well as paying people to go ahead and amplify and carry out those lies. And when that doesn't work, her fallback is then to go ahead and attack the royal family because she knows that the attention will move away from her dirty lies and shady business dealings. You ever notice? It's straight out of Hillary Clinton's playbook. Whenever Hillary's emails were brought up or the missing children in Haiti, it's always deflected back onto Trump. The same thing that Harry and Meghan do with the royal family. Anyhow, what do you guys think? This is all opinion. This is me speculating and drawing a conclusion based on what I see here. Definitely let me know your thoughts. As always, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye! I was such a fraud. <laughs>